um, using the techniques and tricks that she learned here on Regular Guy Lures. <clears throat> what are you laughing at? And the angry eyes, of course. That's the uh, that's the important part, right? Yep. Okay, regular viewers, we're back. Thank you so much for the support. And I think I just uh, brushed some wood chips uh, all over my regular assistant who is uh, here today. Actually, the regular editor is here today, if you want to say hello. Hi. There she is. She really exists. So today we are going to talk about um, a topic that you requested. Um, this is how I paint lures with glitter or add glitter to lures that are all beat up and otherwise uh, not looking so good. So if you don't want to use an airbrush or, um, you know, other kinds of coating techniques, uh, foiling and stuff, we could talk about that as well uh, later on. But um, I, I told you when I did the video on this here Moss Boss, and thank you for everybody that watched that, uh, that I had used fingernail polish and glitter to uh, put this pattern on there. And uh, I asked if you wanted to see it, and somebody said they did. So you ask it, and you get it. That's how we do it here at the regular shop. So uh, these are some of the lures that I've made. Um, probably now it probably wasn't a great idea to have the uh, regular editor out here and see all these various baits that I have. Um, you know, the, the, the mystery of how many lures I actually own is probably healthier for our, uh, our marriage uh, so that when I go buy more, you know, she doesn't have this in the, the forefront of her head. What are you laughing at? So anyway, these are some of the ones that I've made. Um, these are some simpler ones um, that I've done with just sprinkling, you know, one kind of uh, sparkle on there. And this is a chartreuse uh, sparkle on the top. I don't think it's really shining there, but um, simple pattern, but it's effective. This is a really old crankbait, actually. And, um, and again, the paint job on it was wrecked. So, but it, uh, it was renewed with some of that and then coated with and sealed with a, epoxy. Some of these don't look so hot as far as the sealant went because... The epoxy I used to use before I started using uh, JB and Welds um, got real yellow. And um, I can't remember what the epoxy brand was. Do you remember what it was? No, she don't remember what it was either. But anyway, um, you know, this one wasn't as yellowy gold as it appeared. And uh, that, that epoxy uh, was really UV reacted apparently. And just sitting out in the sun on my fishing rod out on a fishing trip, yellowed it. Same thing with this guy here, this one, this one. And uh, this one right here. This is one of my favorites that I did. Um, I was kind of able to put a scale pattern on it a little bit. And um, and then sprinkle more sprinkles or sparkles, not really sprinkles on it. Um, but, you know, I was able to get a nice transition there from red to orange to uh, a chartreuse belly. And luckily, it, the UV kind of darkened in a nice place on it. So it kind of made it look like I knew what I was doing, even though I really didn't. Um and this one here, again, terrible uh, epoxy coating because of the yellowing. But I don't know if you can see, I was able to get a decent amount of detail on this guy. This is kind of a sort of crawfishy type uh, pattern there. I don't know what the red dots were to indicate. I guess, you know, they, they somewhat have a red speckle to them. But uh, it was just more of the fact that I could do this pattern as I try to clean it up for you to make it look nice uh, live and in, on camera. Um, and, um, yeah, so red, gold, and then a black sparkle on top and then you know red dots down the side um i don't exactly know how that's a crawfish pattern but that's what i called it so it is what it is um these are sparkles i added to a uh, red fin here this is a, a very basic airbrush pattern that i put on there but i wanted it to have more pizzazz you know um right no sure <laughs> does it have more pizzazz what do you think yeah yeah okay she thinks it has more pizzazz so thank you you're so sweet so, um, yeah, I was able to put some more pizzazz on that, that guy right there and um, sprinkle some sparkles on it. This is another uh, one that kind of came out neat. And this is just rattle can uh, mirror spray paint. And if I was uh, really good at this job, here, regular uh, editor, please hold that for me. And uh, we'll provide a brief musical interlude, perhaps, while I go get that paint. All right, so we're back. Sorry, I thought I had everything I needed, but like... As per usual, um, you are dealing with amateur hour here. But yeah, I was able to use um, a, a chrome spray. I think I actually used mirror uh, finish, which um, 
you can buy it's actually a smaller can it's kind of like this size can here i just don't have any with me i apologize for that but yeah it's a mirror finish and i was going to put one coat of epoxy on it uh put on my scale pattern and then did a quick just a really light quick um spray with that mirror finish and get those scales so that was with a rattle can and then you can see the red sparkles that i put over this crankbait here um and uh, a little bit of black ones on the top. I think it was a black copper mix on the top. So that's how that one came out. But yeah, these rattle cans here uh, with this stuff here. This was uh, one I was using for coating as well. It's a clear with a gold glitter in it. And, um, and, a, and a clear gloss as well if you don't want to mix up epoxy. If you put three or four coats of this on here, um, that'll act really well. It won't work as well as a thick two-part epoxy coat, but it will get the job done. So that's uh, these ones here. So we're going to demonstrate uh, how we did that uh, with a few lures. So if you could, uh, regular editor, please take that away for me. Thank you so much. And I'll get my used lure cup. And um, I don't think that uh, anybody here is surprised that I have a used lure cup. Are you surprised about that at all? No. No. These are uh, these are <laughs> these are ones uh, that I found uh, fishing. Uh, people, like I said, like to leave things around for me in trees and such. And when the cup gets full, I, uh, I redo them. So we have a uh, itsy bitsy. Does still have the tree on it? Rattle trap. That does look like it has a piece of tree on it. No, that was the tail. Uh, like a. Um, that's a um, that fiber crazy. tail, probably. Yeah, that was a piece of. Yes, that was a piece of flora and fauna. But yeah, um, that's all just been. This has been probably sitting in the bayou for uh, a year or two. <laughs> Before I found it, the hooks are beginning to rust off and everything like that. Um, I found this little guy here. It's missing a hook on it. Missing most of its paint. So we'll redo that little guy as well. Uh, this is a really old uh, Pop R looking one. So I don't know how long that was uh, floating down the, down the river. But uh, we're going to clean this guy up and redo him. And then uh, just recently I found this guy with uh, way too light of line and a horrible knot hanging from a tree. So I can't imagine why they lost that one. Um, uh, my, uh, youngest regular assistant did enjoy that it was pink, but, uh, unfortunately it's not going to stay that color. So we're going to go take it to the regular sink, hopefully, and clean these up and, uh, and show you what they look like. So just wash, take the hooks off and wash them just like you're washing the dishes. Now can I get a thumbs up? Thank you so much. Okay, we're back, regular viewers. Last uh, last time where we left you was we had our old dirty lures. We took the hooks off of them, and uh, the regular editor was trying subtly to explain to me I hadn't taken the hooks off of this one, and uh, apparently I was uh, too thick, I think is the phrase, to notice. So, um, But we uh, adapted, overcame, and conquered, and we were able to get the hooks off of it. So anyway, uh, after uh, a washing, if you remember just a few seconds ago for you, uh, how these looked, um, they are completely different right now. So, you know, they actually have not bad paint jobs on them once they've been cleaned. But as I told you, we are going to um, we're gonna paint them with fingernail polish and glitter. So my idea is to spray paint these guys first as a base coat and these two. Uh, we're going to try to um, just paint over. This one has enough paint on it. But uh, this fact, this one I wouldn't have painted, but it's missing this spot right here. And that's the death of the paint job on these uh, little guys. So it's just going to continue to get worse. So we'll just paint it just for funsies. And this one here, like I said, it cleaned up really nice. I just want something that's a little more darker red. Apparently the regular dog is trying to get in on the action over here too. But um, um, I'm going to try to do a, a, a pattern match. Uh, to try and demonstrate how in intricate, is that the word? Yes. Intricate. I don't know why I can't say that all of a sudden. How intricate you can do with this process if you take your time. So we're going to try to, like I said, match this pattern as we go down the bait. I'm going to start by taking these little uh, half eyes off uh, because of the way it was sitting in the sun, this one is red and this one's white, you know, and the fish just won't like that, right? No, I'm just kidding. Will the bass notice the regular editor? No, the bass won't notice. The bass won't notice. Good job. Neither will any other fish. 
<laughs> Probably most of the viewers wouldn't notice either, uh, or anybody else except for the OCD regular guy here. So those eyes are off, and um, and the trick, guys, if you're trying to make one of these, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I can't pick it up. It is just one eye that is cut in half. I'm sure that you could figure that out on your own because it's a circle with a dot in the middle. So when you put it back together, it's amazing. That's probably a little too small to see, but I promise you it's there. So the eyes have been taken off this guy. We're going to use our friend Vice Grips in our garage here and spray paint these animals. So a regular editor, please grab that one. Thank you for your lovely assistance this evening. And there's the other one. Can you hold that one too? And um, we are going to spray paint this. Uh, we're going to spray paint them with this duplicolor. Uh, it's supposed to be wheel coating. It's supposed to be shiny kind of colory steel. It doesn't come out like that. It's going to look more like this, but that's not important right now. Just I just want a base, a nice even base coat on there. So, all right. So we're out here in the uh, El Fresco spray booth, and the regular editor is going to show off her spray painting skills. All right, regular editor, cue the spray paint. Look at that, people. Look at the style. All right, flip her over. Thank you. All right, at the bottom. There we go. At the fronts. And right down the snoot there. Good job. Show off those. Look at that. Ooh, nice even coat. Beautiful. Clean slate. Hand that off to the eldest regular assistant, please. And let's go for number D. All right. Probably want to get your little fingers away from there because I don't think that's a fingernail polish you want. Here she goes again, folks. The amazing spray painting editor. Look at her go. Look at the style. Look at the speed. Oh, it's got a regular hair on it. Look at that. It's probably from the regular dog. All right. And is the belly all right? Let's check, a, let's check out the belly one more time. Beautiful. All done? What do you think? Does it look good to you? Yeah. Do you think you got it? You're the painter. I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your opinion? I think it's good. All right. She thinks it's good, folks. Ship it. Okay. So the regular editor did a superb job. Superb job spray painting those lures for us clearly an expert so we're going to start off uh, with these ones right here we're going to use our uh, glitter uh, you can find these in your kids art supply um, or you can start to purchase it yourself not going to lie to you these are this is all my glitter okay this isn't my kids glitter i don't want to what are you laughing at this is my glitter okay yes, i have my i have my own supply of glitter i can be a man and have glitter I like to make things sparkle. What's wrong with that? So uh, we got to find the colors that we're looking for here and the ones that we're going to use. So this one, uh, we have this like holographic black color that I really like. Let me try to get this under the camera. And then, uh, and then this small silver. So we're going to try to keep this one a little simple here. And um, I use a cup to catch the sparkles in because uh, I know it's bananas, but I, I can reuse the sparkles in other applications. Uh, the big miss is that bananas to reuse them? Is that you can it's a safe space out here in the regular garage? Okay, but um, I'm going to demonstrate for the regular editor and she is going to show you how to take it from there. So we're going to start out with clear nail polish and we're just going to do little bits at a time. Okay, so this is that one side, and I said little bits at a time, and I'm doing the whole side, but this whole bait is just a little bit. Okay, so while it's still moist, everyone's favorite word, take our little sparkly doos, sparkle farkles, and we sprinkle the sparkles on there as my big hand is in the way, and you can't see what's happening, but the sparkle is landing on the sticky part. And the waste is going down in there, and then you just tap it off. And now we have a sparkled bait right there. Okay, see that finish? What do you think? Super. All right, so we're going to switch. You're going to take that. It's important, pro tip, cover this up in between, or else you will accidentally knock it over. Ask me how I know. How do you know? 
I've accidentally knocked it over. So just do that what? one side. The eye too? Yeah, go over it, the whole thing. Go nuts. Holding. Yeah, we want to try to make sure it doesn't drip onto the sides that we're not painting, okay? Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. All right, so that's good. That's oh, enough. Just that's a little, enough? yeah, you're I didn't just trying even to get really it. get that part. You're good. You're just trying to get it yeah. moist. Well, you can stop using that word. That's everyone's favorite word, moist. Okay, so this, this uh, particular thing of sprinkles, sparkles, I don't know why I keep calling it sprinkles, doesn't have a diffuser on the top, I guess you'd call it. So I take my big old thumb and I cover it up and then I, so it only a little bit is coming out or a little or bit. Or a lot. Or a lot bit. Okay, here, try the rest. Okay. Oh, great. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, get it all over that moist part so that it sticks to it. <laughs> what? Stop using that word. It's not dry. It's the opposite of dry. Is it done? I think we're done. We'll get a little bit right there. Good. Okay. Now uh, tip it over in the cup. Okay. And just tap tap the vice grips. Beautiful. Look at that. Show them off. Show them off. Look at that. <laughs> Professional. Okay. So now we weren't going to get the back. So again, um, and if you want to get real fancy, you can switch to that color um, if, it, if it makes a difference for you. But we'll stick with clear because it's already open. And I'll just do this one section right here. So if you want to sparkle that. The black. Yeah. So undo the top. This is black blue. holograph. It's a black hologram. It's kind of a blackish, bluish, hologramish thingy. Okay. Right there. Look at that. Tap it off. And if you feel like right on the snoot you missed a little bit, you can pour a little bit more on there while it's still moist. Like gravy. All right. Like a nice turkey sandwich is supposed to be. Okay. With a moist maker. Do you use a moist maker when you make our turkey sandwiches? No. No, you don't? Okay, so let's try it again. I'm going to hold it this away for you. Sprinkle it, just like making a cupcake. Please ignore the B-52 size oh. dragonfly that just came in here. It's okay. All right, so there we go. We got some nice sparkles on the back. Sparkle farkles on the back. We're going to put a little more on the tail there. Could you pretty please... Faithful editor assistant, put some more on the back. Beautiful. Great. Just that easy, folks. Okay, so we see there's a little bit of red on the belly here. Uh, I don't ever like the red by the tail. And it's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. So we're just going to paint that clear. And do that one again for me, please. Am I covering the whole thing? Or am I just missing it? <laughs> I think you're getting it. Is that okay? Yeah, let me see a little bit more. It's okay. Like it happens. It's okay. Sparkles are cheap. You know how you know they're cheap? You buy them. There you go. Look at you. It's like you know me well. Thank you very much. Okay, so now the fancy part. You ready for this one? And we'll use another color for this. We'll use red. Just right here. A little dab will do you. And we could just leave it like that, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to do the whole thing sparkly. And it's just that easy, okay? We will put our customary and on purpose shad dart, if uh, dart, shad dot. Shad dart is a lure that. Uh, the regular grandpa and I used to use in the Merrimack River. Catch, you know what? What? Shad. Oh. It's in the title. Oh, I didn't. I'm just I kidding. Wasn't. Okay, that was a terrible little dot. There. Uh, yeah, turns out the uh, regular guy's back is uh, out to lunch right now, so there was a, a twinge of pain right there is what made that jump. How exciting, huh? Okay. So that one's done, and what we're going to do is just let it dry for a bit. Uh, next step will be spray it with clear gloss to seal it. And then, if we're really lucky and really fancy, we'll two-part epoxy that sucker. All right? Okay, viewers, so we're back. Um, some time has passed since last we spoke, and uh, these dried. And uh, the regular editor, now that she's had her basic training, 
in uh, glitter craft here. She's going to do this popper here. You know, show the kids at home, all the regular viewers. She's going to do that popper uh, in whatever color and or pattern she wants. Um, using the techniques and tricks that she learned here on Regular Guy Lures. <laughs> what are you laughing at? And I'm going to do this one in, uh, can anybody guess? Anyone? Anyone? I'm guessing it's a shad. A shad pattern. Thank you. Okay, you're so good. Uh-oh. So, don't do any mess up. You don't mess up. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is like Bob, Bob Ross. Yeah. Happy, happy little trees. Happy mistakes. We'll just make, have happy accidents, I guess it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a, a pattern on this one that I, that I, I think I like. So um, this is the part where we'd ask the regular editor to cue the music. Do you want to ask the regular editor that? Seeing as you know her pretty sure. well. Sure. Self, cue the music. Hopefully the uh, epoxy will cover all my mistakes. And we'll put a nice smooth finish on it. But there's one more step before that. So there we go. That's what we got here. What do you think, huh? No, so we're going to let this dry. And then after uh, we're all done, we're going to uh, spray it with a clear coat just to kind of hold all the sparkle farkles in place. So this is going to go over on the drying rack. But we'll put this up here for the folks at home to see. Get a little red on the tail, the mandatory red on the mouth of the popper, and a little bit of chartreuse, silver, and blue to darker holographic blacky blue on the back. I don't know if that's a real color though, but. Look at that. That is some high class fish there, lady. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to do the mandatory red mouth, or do you want to do something else? I think your regular assistant would like a blue mouth. A blue mouth, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll make everybody in America mad. Everybody. Everybody. Well, just so you know. Because everybody's going to see this, right? Just so you know. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this one is for the youngest, the youngest regular assistant. This is why I did it in pink. Not for any personal bias at all. Mm. But I personal didn't favoritism. know what, what color uh, fish are and what their patterns are. No, why not? All your years of fishing experience. Yeah. All my years of fishing experience haven't like absorbed into you through like osmosis or something like that. Mm. But all your years of fingernail and toenail painting should really be paying off right now. I like this color. I think you took it from me. Uh, young lady, you donated all of these to the cause. Mm. You gave them to me in a big organized box, which I subsequently broke. Mm. Okay. Okay, Looks got good. some blue. Well, they're all, all these colors are still out here and accessible. Uh oh, can mm. we? I don't want that blue, sorry. Stop it, stop this it. This one, that I one. think she would like. Though. Okay, would you like me to sprinkle? Please. Do your worst. You're trying to turn it a little for me so we can get that because it's kind of concave. The concave, right? Convex is outward. Yes. Beautiful. So. Look at that, folks. <whistles> Fancy. How how many uh, hours of uh, doing this have you got now? How many how many minutes did this go? <laughs> this was Five. ten minutes thus far. Oh. So you've got about 10, 15, 15 minutes of training, or mm -hmm. five minutes of training maybe, and 10 minutes of application. Mm -hmm. Good job. Hey guys, and then there was one, the last one here. So I'm going to try to do as intricate a possible, as possible of a pattern on this and um, see how nice we can make it look. So we'll start with the bottom. This may not be super exciting to watch, and I apologize, but I want to make sure that you guys get the the point and see how how easy it is to do. Because one thing I'd love to see is you guys doing this stuff yourself, and uh, 
sending me some pictures on uh, on our email here. So we've got nice gold on the belly. I know it didn't have a gold on the belly, but that's what I want. So, And I'm going to do um, red in all the pink areas. And then I'm going to do copper here in these areas. And then i got a dark uh, color for the back. So it may be easier to try. Let's try that. It's good to not have shaky hands when you do this. And unfortunately, I kind of have some shaky little paws there. Kind of see those stripes able to make. Let's see if we can do any better on the other side. The smaller I can make the brush strokes, of course, the closer it'll get to For the swoopy swoop right here. Okay, so you can kind of see that pattern. It's a little loose, but we got it. So now we're going to start filling in the red. Okay, little bits at a time, just like that. I'm clearly not a pinstripe artist. All right, that's not on camera, guys. I'm just trying to keep my hands steady and see what I'm doing. Okay, I think that is all the red, the copper, and the gold on the bottom. It's not perfect, but you can see, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, even though it's not perfect, but you can see that there's a lot of intricacy, and you can see the difference in the colors that we are uh, trying to put on here. It's probably more than the fish will notice, but it's fun, I guess. So, I guess. <laughs> no, I, it's fun to do this kind of stuff here, a little craft. You know, I feel like I'm a Hobby Lobby commercial or something. Okay, so now that part was easy. We get the back. Okay, now I told you I was going to put eyes on this one, and I will, but we're going to let this dry first, and we're going to spray it with a um, clear spray paint uh, to seal in all the sparkles from falling off. If I tried to do that right now, I'd move a lot of garbage, a lot of garbage, and uh, it would just be more of a mess. So, But there it is, raw and in the flesh. So. 
we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be applying our clear gloss to the ones that we've already done. And we're back, regular viewers. The paint's dried. Or the glitter. Is glitter dry? The, uh, the paint we use to keep the glitter there is definitely dry. Yes. Now it's time for our friends JB and Weld. The regular guy did not know that I'd be taking over his channel today. So regular viewers, our lures have dried. Uh, we spray painted them with a clear coat again. And here, you hold these. Thank you so much. The regular editor is still here helping out because my regular back is still out. So uh, right now is the uh, last step for this coating, and we are going to mix up uh, JB Weld, two-part epoxy, uh, which the regular editor hasn't done. So she's going to get to experience the lovely smell of uh, JB I'm really Weld. Certain. I have smelled this before when you tried to do it in the house. That's right. I'm sure you did. Okay. So uh, we're going to do one. I got four brushes over here because uh, we can only do it for a mount for one lure. Again, I told you, if you try to mix up more of it, it dries, uh, it sets off faster. So it heats up quicker and hardens faster. So you actually uh, don't end up using it. So we'll start off with just a little bit for the little guy. And we'll have you start with that one. So I make a circle. And then I take the other one and I fill the circle in with that. And so I you get a relatively, it. yes, mix, 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 mix. How long? Uh, a goodly amount. That's not really helpful. And we put in a little bit of our clear sparkle farkles because I got to do it because there's not enough sparkles on this lower already. Just got to be careful where you place that. It's still Fred G. Lay. Okay, let me see. And how do we so, know when it's done, regular guy? Usually mix in a good 15 seconds. If there's any kind of cloudiness in it, when it returns to clear, that's how you know it's done. So you get a glob on there, and you're just going to kind of work it all the way around the lure like that. Okay? If you fill in the eyes, it's okay. We can uh, clean those out later. You did. So that is your pile of goo. I'll go over here. This is a used plate uh, with some other glitter on it. But it's okay. The bass won't notice. Uh oh, what about the eyes? That's what, that's what I said. It's fine if you oh, fill those that in. Eyes. Yeah, try to keep it off the vice grip as much as you can. It's going to get on there. But I, if I don't forget the re proper removal step, which is to cut around the vice grip, teeth, nose, I guess that is, teeth, nose, um, then it'll be fine when it comes off of there. If you don't, it'll peel the epoxy right off with it. How much more do I put on here? That's, you've got like plenty covered. on there. You just got to make sure. Sometimes it's sneaky and you think you'll have it, but you won't. Do I try to do brush strokes as I slowly twist it? Kind of like a little bit overlapping to help ensure that I am getting in contact with every part of the lure. And also it helps um, drips to not form. It helps drips to not form. That's not a Way to say is that a double that, is negative? It? I don't know if that's a double negative. It helps strips to not form. It's a. It's definitely the wrong way no, to say it. No, it's not a double negative, but it's wrong. <laughs> you, know you know what we forgot to do on this one? We forgot to put eyes on this one. So now we're going to have to uh, call hurrying. <laughs> we're going to have to. So we were hurrying. Yeah. Well, now, so now we're going to have to hurry more. And you guys can probably hear in the background the regular dog is upset with us and she's not out here enjoying the entertainment of the regular shop or trying to chase the regular squirrels. Okay. I'm going to put an eyeball on this dude right there. I'll try not to say dog. Yeah, don't. Don't? Why? What's wrong with dogs? That dog is fine. That dog is fine? But only oh, had a dog. What time is that? We're done with the dogs? Yes. Okay, so we've got this eye on this dude. Okay, and now we're gonna go and put a little, without, that's gonna be the hard part now, because this should have already been glued to the bait in this rookie fashion here. Trying to coat epoxy on that so that it hardens. And then if you don't want it to be all askew. Okay, 
Good. So that's got eyes on it. The eyes have it. If you would be a deer, please, and twist this like this ever so slightly so that it doesn't um, harden in, that, in a weird state with a lump on it. There. We can use the um, rotator over there, but I didn't set it up. So we're doing this right now. This is for the cheapest, easiest way to do it. Folks at home that don't have a rotator, how I used to do it for years and years and years until my in-laws bought me a rotisserie engine motor rather for Christmas one year to support their son-in-law's unhealthy habit of lure making. Okay, so there's our little eyes on that guy. I probably should use bigger eyes, but that's okay. It'll be fine. We just rotate it like this for a little bit until it's not dripping any longer. You don't have to do this until it's hard all the way, which is one of the reasons that the uh, rotator is nice. You just throw it on there and then it just does the whole thing and you don't have to think about it anymore. But this stuff goes pretty quick. So before we do the next two, though, we'll actually try to be professionals. And by we, I mean me, because it's not your fault. You didn't know. You're going to go set that up. And I will try and, uh, yeah, I can try and set that up. All right. And we'll put the eyes on first. Yes, that's the what I mean. We'll put it. the eyes on the other lures first. We're going to put eyes on our little lures here. So you're going to need some tweezers and you're going to need some super glue. All right. So put a little dot of super glue there. Just a dot. That'll do it. Perfect. Take your tweezers. Sometimes you got to get underneath it okay. there. Why do you right have to, to use edge. tweezers? Because your oil's on your skin? Yeah, it's good. Oops. Uh -oh. It's good to not touch them. They are sticky backed. Um, they're not super duper sticky back, which is why you need the super glue. But look at that. Teamwork can make the dream work here. My hand was steady enough. Okay. There's the eye. So we're going to have to let that dry. Ooh, that rhymed. Mm. I don't have to pay extra for that. Let me help get that off of there. With the non straight all. With our powers combined. We can get that eye to stay. There you go. Oh, close. Oh, oh, she's going in for the finger, folks. This always ends badly. Oh, dear. It's stuck to my finger yep, now. Now you've glued it to yourself forever. It's a rookie mistake. You hate to see it. Well, I am a rookie, so. It's always there. I can just touch it and place it. You'll see. I don't think there's enough there glue you go. on there. Oh, yeah, there's plenty. Okay, so we're going to let that sit there for a second. Now, the exciting one. This lure has a funky eye, uh, so it looks mean and angry and aggressive. And uh, what that is is a half a an eye. So we're going to cut this one in half. And that sounded expensive out there. I don't hear anybody screaming, so the kids must be okay. Okay, so I've got my scissors. I put the eye basically in half. And that's how you cut something in half. Okay? In case nobody ever knew that. The novel approach. Mm -hmm. But that's what those are. Some people think those are like specialty eyes or something like that for these lures. If you want to get that mean look, it's just cutting them in half. All right. Putting it right here, right? Yep. Just right in that little half circle, please. Look I at definitely this. couldn't be a surgeon because my hand is... What's up, Doc? Okay, put the angry eye in there. Doesn't he look upset now? Oops. Okay, there's the angry eyes. Show the folks at home the angry eyes. Say, hey, regular viewers. Put it in there. Oh, sorry. There we go. In the spotlight there. Angry eyes. Does it look angry? So what do you think of that? The intricacy. Can you see any intricacy? As my lure falls off the rotator because the clamp is broken. But luckily it's mostly hard. Angry eyes. It's okay. All right. Um, we're going to take care of the mess I just made and we'll be right back. And of course, as we are finishing up the epoxy on the last two lures, the regular guy forgot to turn the mic back on. Uh, so instead of subjecting you to many more minutes of this, since you already did see the last two lures that, that were done uh, with the epoxy, we sped this up so you can just see the highlights. All right, regular viewers. So our lures are dried. We're out here in the uh, El Fresco shop. The weather is just so nice this week. Uh, to take advantage of it. And again, the uh, regular editor is really helping me out here uh, because my back is out. So she was just, I want to thank her. She's just been such a big help this week's video. 
Um, which is why I'm out here sitting because it uh, hurts to stand out there on the the workbench for too long. But anyway, enough personal issues that you don't care about. So um, this next step here, we put a really thick coat of epoxy on these lures. And uh, hopefully you can see. So it came out pretty good. Um, but you, there is some cleaning up to do at this point. Just to get it off the vice grip, what I always recommend doing, I take my razor blade and I just kind of cut it around here. And we're going to clean out these eyelets. Because if I don't, I have done a video before where I forgot, <laughs> and it shows you what happened. You can actually peel the epoxy right off as you open the, the vice grip up. So cut, the, cut around a couple times like that just to cut a little channel in there. And then when you open the vice grip, now it's not going to peel the epoxy off your nice new lure. All right, and then I have a little teensy drill bit that fits the eyelet. Cut that out, or drill that out, I guess is the word for that. And um, just work your way around the lure like that. I have some other tools over here that I'll use. Scissors, tweezers, and um, these uh, little snub nose cutters. To just again, kind of, you want to cut that epoxy off. Don't try to peel it off because it'll start to peel the rest of that finish that you spent all that time on. We use our friend all as well to poke it and to clean these out. Once you get the hole started, kind of drill it out a little bit on each side. Not your finger. Don't worry, I have safety fingers on, so we're safe. They are uh, not impervious. They're impervious to drill bits, so don't worry about that. It's like steel-toed shoes, except for fingers. It's hard to do this to keep it on the, the camera there, but all you need is just enough for the split ring to get through. So there you go. Same thing on the eyelet, on the uh, tie-on eye, rather. Poke it through with the awl, the various different tools depending on the angle of it and all that other stuff. Get our little drill in there just to nice and gentle just to kind of auger it out like if you're those ice fishermen watching the show if there's any out there. Um, you'll be doing that here shortly by the way. Sorry. Um, but yeah that's there you go that one's cleaned out as well. But yeah, just kind of like an ice auger, just pulling that stuff right out of the hole there. So, so that one's done, and this one is done. I'm going to do these two here. I won't subject you to that because it's more of the same. This is uh, the regular editor's Bug-Eyed Beauty. Um, what? That's a good name for it. So, um, it's hideous. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's very Go bright. Ahead. It, the person it was made for will love it. There you go. And the bass won't notice. So, uh, and here is our attempt at an intricate pattern. Um, I don't know. Regular editor, can you see the Very different intricate. colors? Yes, you can. Can you see like the line patterns in there, mm -hmm. the gold and the red? And then the angry eyes? Right, yep. Does he look angry? He looks very angry. Oh, that's all that matters. Okay, yeah, well, I'll be out here by myself uh, contemplating life, the universe, and everything while I clean these out. And uh, when we come back, they'll be all hooked up and ready to go. Okay, so here is the finished product. Uh, I know this one kind of has ridiculous big hooks on it, especially now that I see it on camera. But those are the hooks I had, and it'll be all right. Um, I put a, for you there, regular editor, I put a piece of flare on mm -hmm. the back to try and match the rest of your uh, beautiful your fancy paint job there. She will love it. So with the bug eyes. And uh, I put a little bit of flare on the back of this one, I guess, for me. Pieces of flare. Pieces huh? of flare. Only two pieces of flare, though. Some people like more. But we encourage two. Okay, so uh, again, this is the try to follow the old pattern. If you go look back in the video that way. And uh, remember what it was before and uh, see if you can see we were able to follow that pattern a little bit see if I can get it to zoom focus how do you camera focus how do you tell it to do that whoa that was a neat trick that's why you're the editor 
So you can see the lines that we're able to put in it with the gold and then the red and I did a gold stripe on the bottom there. So, and the angry eyes, of course, that's the, uh, that's the important part, right? Yep. So, so that's that, that is how you finish a lure with glitter and epoxy and, um, get the camera to focus all in one felt swoop there. So again, sorry for the change of venue. Um, but uh, it's so nice out and I had to sit. So there that is. If you have any questions or there's any other things you want to see like this, just let me know down in the comments this way, I guess. And uh, thank you for all the support. And regular editor, thank you so much for the assistance or else this video would not have been out this week. So I truly appreciate it. Don't forget... Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>